Hello, my name is John from Osaka Makerspace and today we're going to build an AM FM radio that I bought from AliExpress. Um, this is basically just a, a soldering project. Um, it came with directions that were all written in Chinese and I don't read Chinese so I'm just going to use the um, the PCB to try and figure out how to put this thing together. So first we will organize all of our parts here. Uh, makes it easier when you're trying to to find something. Um, and then we'll start putting things on. So first we're going to work with the SMD component. So first I will uh, I'll just put a little solder on the pads and then use some hot air to actually attach the the chip. Uh, I find that hot air is a little bit better, a little more clean, um, but even still I want to kind of clean up my traces afterwards. And now we'll go for our through hole chip. Um, I'm not exactly sure what these chips are for. Possibly they are amplifiers or uh, demodulators or I don't know something like that. Now we're connecting up the uh, the variable capacitor and uh, so that will allow us to tune AM radio and then the the volume and power switch I just put on there and now this is the stereo output uh, jack so you can have headphones it's a nice little feature they didn't have to include since it has a speaker and let's see you got all that on there and now I believe wait, what am I putting on there now ah yes the transistor and a switch and I'm checking the LED and how the LED is going to fit into the case made it sort of fit nice and snug. Um, so this little bar, I at first I thought it was probably a ferrous core and then I thought well maybe it's just a file because it seemed quite abrasive. Um, but it, it seemed rather ridiculous to in include a file. So I, I figured it had to be the, the ferrous core. And since the, the coil um, was actually wrapped around some rather bendy material I realized that yes you could indeed deform that bendy material and get that uh, that ferrite core to fit through the middle so that was, that was strange um, this PCB while it has wonderful markings for all the individual components as, as far as the, um, the capacitors and the resistors and whatnot um, it, it's very clear where they belong um, there was a few things that, that were not very clear, the, the coil, the radio coil, as well as these other two little small coils. Um, one of them I believe was referred to as a T8 or something, a T9. Um, and they are slightly different uh, gauged wire and maybe with one more and fewer uh, turn in them. So that, that was took a little bit of... of uh, working out and I guess I maybe I got lucky uh, because it just worked out okay so uh, now I'm attaching the uh, the capacitors I believe and I went for the 104s first just because they're the most plentiful uh, to kind of get them all out of the way so when I do things perhaps I'm not the fastest at doing it but uh, I, I try to be very thorough um, I like to complete one thing before moving on to the next. Of course, sometimes it's faster to uh, to just push everything through the holes all at once, solder everything all at once, and clip everything all at once. But then you also tend to make mistakes, and having to fix a mistake, um, a soldering mistake especially, is is sometimes more trouble than it's worth. So just take it slow. It's a small project anyway. A little bit of extra time, not a big deal. So let's see. Oh, I've already put in the the electrolytic capacitors as well. There's only three of those. If, if I remember correctly, there was a uh, two 100 microfarads and maybe a what a 220 or something like that. 
I don't remember exactly that, that third one. <clears throat> so a few of these um, capacitors, well, th these are very cheap um, ceramic capacitors uh, because the, the codes on them are sometimes very, very difficult to see. Uh, maybe the, the ink got smeared or something or rubbed off and so you really kind of had to to squint every now and then but overall it was okay. I did end up with one extra capacitor which confused me a little bit at first. I believe it was a 202. Um, I kept checking to make sure that there was no extra spot that I was just kind of overlooking but there was one that was definitely extra. Um, so now I'm going onto the resistors. Now these resistors all have, are, are three banded resistors, meaning that the there are three little stripes of paint that tell you what their value is. And it was, I later realized, written on the top of the Jap uh, of the Chinese instructions. But I, being able to read Japanese, I can only understand a few of those colors. Like it was black gray, red, green, yellow. Those are the only ones I, I could understand. So, uh, and then even what they meant, I couldn't quite understand. So that wasn't terribly useful. And I suppose I could have looked it up on the internet. This is something that I've been meaning to learn for a while, all the different um, color codes for the four and five band uh, resistors. Um, for some reason, they want to use a bunch of different standards three bands four bands five bands but the codes are not always you know a one-to-one -one, uh, equivalency there blue is not always the same number in my under understanding anyway so I pulled out my my component tester and I pulled out a notepad and started writing all this stuff down as I discovered what they were and I would typically first write the the actual um, value, resistance value, as determined by my tester, and then after looking at the board I'd figure out exactly which uh, equivalent that was. Um, I think they were all pretty much within tolerances, but uh, I just liked to have, to have that, um, that, that little, uh, what would you call it, the redundancy of just knowing for sure what I have. And so I'll use that in the future to um, to make some instructions for, for this kit and make it a little bit easier for people in the future to, uh, to know what they're dealing with. And so now we are um, looking at trying to hook up the speaker. So this was not a very clear um, part of the process. Um, although it does say SP and there is a plus sign on there and what seems to be a minus sign there are also some other little um, etchings not etchings but you know printings on this board that just meant absolutely nothing and so I wasn't really confident in in what I was doing at this point but I was making some best guesses and I was thinking to uh, try it out and then, you know, troubleshoot. And indeed I, I had to do that uh, a little bit later on. I realized um, that I had misconnected the, uh, the negative battery terminal and I, I fixed it later, but we'll see that as well. So my first pass at kind of finalizing things here. Just running some wires, trying to figure out the best way to get things to where they need to be. Um, I was also a little bit worried about the the uh, the finish on the on the coil wiring. Uh, some of it was clearly coated in wax, and some of that wax was peeling off. I think that wax was probably just to hold the coils in place on the the flexible um, housing that it was wrapped around but uh, I wanted to be sure that things were not going to be shorting out so I tried to run those carefully. Now I am super gluing in the uh, the speaker just because 
it was only friction fit in and it had become very loose and you don't want a, your speaker flopping around inside of there so I just stuck some some glue along there and uh, I considered doing the same thing for the for the AM FM switch because it's just kind of friction fit um, but since I want this to be able to be opened at a later date so that people can um, use it as a type of reference I've decided not to uh, glue that switch on there <clears throat> hopefully I don't lose it and so here I am now uh, looking f I believe for where I'm going to connect the batteries and so this spot I believe was the place that was labeled positive um, after just kind of logicking things out there <laughs> the process of of deduction I uh, figured out that, that that plus was probably not for this the the speaker positive um, it was probably for the battery positive terminal um, but initially I thought it was for the speaker but and then I decided um, based on the schematic I just needed to connect to to a ground uh, for the negative terminal and I just happened to use the black wire because black is negative and you know so I stuck it to the closest uh, terminal that I could find which turned out to be the wrong one but it turned out to be also extremely close so we'll see maybe very soon what happened and if not I'll explain it <coughs> okay so now I am ah there's a spring for connecting the antenna to the board and so when you close the case the spring uh, makes that connection and I dropped that spring and it's a very light spring very springy spring and it took me about five or ten minutes to find that spring again okay so getting things together trying to figure out how this case is gonna fit uh, it's, it's a slightly poor fit um, it seems like it snaps but it doesn't really snap and that's it it's put together and try it out look the lights on but problem is you turn it on you turn it off and that little power light always stays on but it doesn't always make sound so that just means that um, the batteries are connected in slightly the wrong spot so I'm, I'm going through I'm looking I'm trying to figure out uh, where this battery should be connected on the negative side and so now I've I've discovered how the switch operates and just had to move it one contact pad over and now it works um, the radio also does work quite well um, AM and FM due to the the building uh, that I'm in it's, it's very thick walls so you can't really hear the FM inside but take it outside and it works fine so that's it it's a nice little project I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching.